Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we're going to be going over the latest news updates that you need to know as an investor. So for more videos just like this one, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, go ahead and become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents per month because that's what keeps me here on YouTube, and with that being said, let's get right into today's stories. Let's start off talking about the stock market, considering that the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 are doing very well because they both keep just breaking records and surging to new highs. Recently, we've seen the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, as well as the Dow Jones increase by 0.36%, 0.22%, and 0.32% respectively. On top of that, we've also seen the video streaming platform Rumble surge by 36% in their share price today, ticker symbol RUM. Rumble essentially operates just like YouTube as a video platform, except Rumble believes that they are quote-unquote cancel culture free. And the spike in their share price is due to Rumble announcing a partnership with Barstool Sports, adding more than $400 million to its valuation. So if you are a stock trader, you would definitely want to check out that story because after a pre-anticipatory run or after a very good growth catalyst, we know that this stock is going to come down in their share price. So feel free to trade off of the volatility. In other news, we saw Elon Musk, who is the CEO of Tesla and a plethora of other companies, recently visit Auschwitz. And without going into the gruesome details about what happened at Auschwitz, I would highly recommend you research this location to determine what happened to the Jews there. The relevance of Elon Musk visiting Auschwitz during this time of controversy over at X, which was formerly known as Twitter, due to anti-Semitic posts is gigantic. Because currently, they are trying to moderate anti-Semitic and anti-Jewish posts on X while also maintaining freedom of speech. So there's a give and take there. For IPO news, we see Caspi issuing a $1 billion IPO. Caspi is a Kazakhstani super app, and it had one of the largest initial public offerings since Birkenstock. They raised $1 billion and notched a $17.5 billion market cap on its NASDAQ debut. This is the third largest company to go public through an IPO since 2020 behind chip designer Arm and a Johnson & Johnson spinoff. However, as of right now, their ticker symbol KSPI and their share price is down around 0.18% by falling just 0.5% recently. But what does this super app actually do? Well, they're actually a fintech giant and they're very similar to China's WeChat because they serve both consumers as well as merchants with services like banking, buy now, pay later lending, online grocery shopping, and tax filing. Essentially, this is a fintech company that has a digital app very reminiscent of SoFi Technologies, except SoFi is local to the United States, while this other super app is Kazakhstani from Kazakhstan. However, for me personally, I do not think they deserve a $17.5 billion market cap, and here's why. This company said that they have 13.5 million customers, and they said that they brought in $2.7 million worth of revenue last year. However, for me, I do not think this justifies a $17.5 billion market cap, even if we discount their share price according to their current growth rates. But with that being said, I just wanted to make you aware of this initial public offering and IPO news, considering the best stocks that are becoming publicly traded. So if you want to invest into a foreign fintech company, feel free to look further into this company. However, I personally will not be investing into this company. I would much rather invest into a company like SoFi Technologies or Ally Financial. I would also rather invest into Mercado Libre over this company, and their ticker symbol is M-E-L-I, ticker name Meli, because they are also a very successful foreign fintech company, and I think the sky is the limit for that company, so feel free to look into Mercado Libre. Next up, we have Verizon stock, which recently surged due to their quarter four sales, which topped estimates. If you didn't know, Verizon, ticker symbol VZ, is a telecommunications company, and they are currently up around 5.17% right now, with a share price of $41.63. The reason for the momentum in their share price is not only that they beat estimates, but their forecasts regarding strong growth in their wireless unit was also extremely impressive. Regarding their financials, Verizon earned an adjusted $1.08 per share, even though their revenue declined by 0.6% year over year to $35.1 billion. So it's really good to see how Verizon is doing pretty well right now, to where their CEO even said the following. After delivering continuous improvement throughout 2023, we ended the year strong and continue to pursue the right balance of growth and profitability. He goes on to say, 
2023 was a year of change. We have the right assets and the best team in place and are well positioned for growth in 2024." End quote. So looking ahead into 2024, Verizon expects their wireless service revenue to grow between 2 and 3.5%, which is pretty good considering that they are already a massive company. Verizon's success has also rubbed off on other telecommunication giants such as AT&T and T-Mobile, which both increased in their share price recently. Over in AI and technology news, we see Microsoft, which is one of my all-time favorite stocks, gaining some more momentum. According to a recent survey, 68% of institutions are planning to adopt Microsoft's generative AI solutions at some point over the next year. This caused an analyst to increase the price target on Microsoft from $415 up to $450 due to the tech giant's generative AI products. On top of that, Microsoft is slated to report their fiscal second quarter results on January 30th with a consensus estimate that they will bring in an earnings per share of $2.76 per share and $61.05 billion worth of revenue. So I am very excited for this because I am a longtime investor in Microsoft and I think I think it's a fantastic company and I would encourage you to look further into this company as well. Next up, we have the Texas-based home builder named DR Horton stock, which is slumping in their share price after they released earnings. Sticker symbol DHI, which I personally hold in my portfolio, recently lowered by 5% in their share price. Now, what's interesting is that during the winter season or the colder months, it's normal to see home buying slump in this regard. What's also interesting is that this company brought in $2.82 per share, which is an increase from what they brought in a year ago, considering that they only brought in $2.76 per share. What's even more mind-boggling is that the company reported revenue of $7.7 .7 billion, which is just ahead of forecasts. So even though this company actually brought in a decent financials, the share price still went down because it wasn't as bullish or positive as investors wanted it to be. This goes to show that sometimes investors are irrational and the market will beat down a stock even though it's a good company that is continuously growing. So despite this company bringing in pretty good financials, the share price still went down after their earnings report. The company also issued their full year guidance to where now they believe that their revenue will come in between 36 billion and 37.3 billion dollars with a consensus of 36.64 billion dollars so overall this should show you that sometimes the market is irrational and you should buy great companies on weakness Next up, we have the media streaming giant Netflix in the news, where you can hop on their platform and watch a plethora of various series and movies. Netflix, ticker symbol NFLX, is doing quite well today. The reason why they are in the news, and for this recent optimism in their share price, is because of a new strategic partnership. Starting in January of 2025, Netflix will become the exclusive home of TKO Group's WWE Raw, which is wrestling. And once this news was released, we saw Netflix shares and TKO Group shares increase in their share price. And those ticker symbols again would be NFLX for Netflix and TKO for TKO Group. But it gets even better for Netflix because in addition to this, Netflix will become the home for all WWE shows and specials outside the United States as well, including SmackDown, NXT, and its premium live events such as WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and the Royal Rumble. As of right now, this deal is slated to last 10 years and it's worth an access of five billion dollars. TKO Group's president and chief operating officer even said and I quote, this deal is transformative. It marries the can't-miss WWE product with Netflix's extraordinary global reach and locks in significant and predictable economics for many years. Our partnership fundamentally alters and strengthens the media landscape, dramatically expands the reach of WWE, and brings weekly live appointment viewing to Netflix, end quote. The chief content officer over at Netflix responded to this by saying, We are excited to have a WWE Raw and its huge and passionate multi-generational fan base on Netflix. He goes on to say, By combining our reach, recommendations, and fandom with WWE, we'll be able to deliver more joy and value for their audiences and our members. This is why the share price of TKO Group rose by more than 19%, while Netflix increased in their share price by 2%. You should also know that Netflix is rapidly marching towards their earnings report, and we will talk more about that later. In regards to defensive contractors, we got a lot of good news. Defensive companies are rolling out their earnings this week, and investors are holding their breath considering that there has been a lot of conflict worldwide over the last few months. Right now, let's quickly talk about one of my favorite stocks, which is Lockheed Martin, which is a defensive contractor. 
Lockheed Martin, ticker symbol LMT, reported adjusted earnings of $7.79 per share, which is up 1.4% from last year. The only slight bump in the road is that their revenue fell for the second straight quarter by 0.6% to $18.87 billion. However, what's interesting is that fact set analysts expected a 6.4% decline in their earnings per share, so they projected a $7.29 EPS, while the company actually brought in $7.79. In a similar vein, fact set analysts saw a decrease of 5.5% in sales to $17.96 billion, even though Lockheed actually brought in $18.87 billion. So this is actually really good news for Lockheed because they beat these estimates by exceeding expectations from analysts, but despite this, their share price still trended lower. Again, this is another classic example to where even if a company beats on their revenue and earnings, it does not guarantee that the company's share price will increase. Luckily, other government contractors have fared better, considering that Booz Allen recently announced a strategic investment in Albedo. According to Booz Allen Hamilton, Albedo operates satellites in very low Earth orbit, which allows them to offer ultra-high resolution commercial imagery from space. I'm sure you could imagine the synergies between this company and Booz Allen for military or other purposes. So I would say that this is a very good strategic investment by Booz Allen, which should increase their share price. But I think the best news in regards to defensive contractors would be Raytheon. And I just want to be transparent, I personally own Lockheed, Booz Allen, as well as Raytheon in my portfolio, because defensive contractors tend to do very well even during negative macroeconomic conditions. These types of companies also perform very well when there is geopolitical turmoil, which is exactly what we are seeing worldwide right now. So feel free to add any of these companies to your portfolio after you do your own research on them. But let's talk more about Raytheon Technologies. Raytheon ticker symbol RTX trades for $92 and they are up around 8.21% right now. The company released their quarter four non-GAAP earnings per share of $1.29, which beat estimates by 4 cents. They also brought in revenues of $19.9 billion, which equates to a 10% year over year increase, beating their estimate by $230 million. More good news for this company is that they have a backlog of, get a load of this, $196 billion, including $100 and $18 billion of commercial and $78 billion of defensive contracts. So this is very good news for Raytheon. In other news for dividend stocks, we have 3M, which recently forecasted weak 2024 demand. 3M, ticker symbol MMM, is down by 10.27% today in their share price. The reason for this is that they forecasted full-year earnings below Wall Street estimates. The company's main problem is weak demand for their products right now, considering a high interest rate and inflationary environment. This is dampening the demand for their non-essential big-ticket purchases, such as 3M's electronic business that makes displays for smartphones and tablets. A UBS analyst even commented by saying, The 2024 outlook disappoints on margins, including both the expected restructuring savings and the underlying operating margins of the business. End quote. Therefore, 3M has a relatively gloomy forecast for the year of 2024. We also have to remember that 3M is dealing with two major blows to their overall public image. The first problem was their lawsuits related to their combat arms earplugs, and their second one involves water pollution, which is tied to Forever Chemical. So clearly, these are not good updates for this company. Overall, the company expects 2024 profit between $9.35 and $9.75 per share, with analysts having an estimate of $9.81 for the entire year of 2024. This means that this company's guidance is lower than Wall Street's estimates, which is not what investors want to see, and that's why their share price is headed downwards. However, if you are a dividend investor, this is a very strong dividend company and I would highly recommend you look into this company because if they rebound, you could have a huge payday. But 3M is not the only one decreasing in their share price today. We also have GE stock, which is tumbling after their earnings. Even though General Electric reported better than expected fourth quarter earnings, its stock is still falling. GE actually beat Wall Street expectations because Wall Street guided an earnings per share of 90 cents while the company actually brought in $1.03. In a similar vein, the company was expected to bring in $17.2 billion of revenue, but they actually brought in $18.5 billion. So GE beat on both their earnings per share as well as their revenue, but despite this, their share price is still trending lower. Now, despite the wind business of this company producing an operating loss of around $300 million, this is actually an improvement from their original loss a year ago of $500 million. So they have cut two 
hundred million dollars worth of operating loss, which in my view is actually good news, not bad news. However, investors are slightly confused about what's happening with GE. And spoiler alert, I do not hold GE in my personal portfolio, but I know a lot of other investors seem to really like them. In general, Wall Street is pretty bullish and positive on this company because overall, 63% of analysts who cover GE have a buy rating on this company. GE shares currently trade at $129 per share and GE stands for General Electric. And they engage in the provision of commercial and military aircraft engines and systems. They are also also involved in renewable energy, generation equipment, and grid solutions, as well as gas, steam, nuclear, and other power generation equipment. So this company is in multiple spaces and segments, and overall they are pretty fundamentally solid. However, I wouldn't anticipate a lot of upside for this company over the short term. Next up we have Fisker, which is an electric vehicle company back in the news, and they trade at just 95 cents per share, and they are up massively recently. And here's why. Fisker said that they expect to sell nearly 5,000 of their uns sold vehicles which they didn't sell last year. And this is because they are signing partnership deals. More than 100 dealers in the United States, Canada, and Europe have expressed interest in becoming a Fisker dealer to sell their SUV. Fisker produced approximately 10,000 vehicles in 2023, however they only delivered 4,700 units. So it's very good to see Fisker actually selling vehicles across the United States, Canada, and Europe instead of them overproducing vehicles. In my opinion, Fisker is a very risky electric vehicle company, but I will continue to keep you updated if more news stories come out about this company. Speaking about stocks that are surging, we saw Census Healthcare surge by 28% recently. Census Healthcare, ticker symbol SRT said they expect their quarter four results to come in at $12 million worth of revenue, which crushes analysts' expectations of $7.6 million, and this got investors excited, causing their share price to surge by 22.2%. On top of that, they see their entire 2023 revenue exceeding $23 million, which also beats analysts' forecasts of $19.3 million. 